fresh haircut. I mean, for, you got a fresh haircut, so we so better get you on camera. Notices? Yeah, <laughs> Dave, you're taking my engine apart. Yes, loving it. Oh, yeah, you you actually are enjoying this, aren't you? Because you, you know, I do. You would uh, well, and not only do you enjoy working on stuff like this, but you kind of think that this should have been done in the first place, right? Mm, by choice. By choice. Your yeah. choice. So, so we're taking the oil injection system off. That's that's this thing in my jigger here, and it's hooked up to this line which goes up to that oil tank, and it feeds the oil into the engines so that we don't have to premix the gas. But if you look at my gas, you'll see it's blue, and that's because I premix it. <laughs> so I'm like, why am I putting an oil injection system on there if I already premix? So here here's where it boils down to the 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 cap. I don't know if you can see it. There's a vent hole in the cap there and it leaks and it gets oil down the side of the engine and on the back and it makes a big mess. And so I figured I don't like that. And because I'm pre-mixing anyway, for reasons I'll explain in a minute, I'm like, I'm not saving any time by having the oil injection system on. And it's actually just another part that can fail and, and create an issue for me. So why even have it on there in the first place? Now, that being said, the Rotax oil injection system is one of the better ones on the market as far as I'm concerned and I've heard that 99.9% .9 of the time the only time that they fail is user error. There's that big old gear we're talking about there. It's plastic and a lot of guys don't like the fact that it's plastic and that's they think it's a failure point point. and it, it could be some guys have said they've seen them stripped so maybe it is maybe it isn't regardless as I always say if it's not on the plane, it doesn't weigh anything and it won't break. So, and not only that, it's free if you don't, except I bought it in the first place, so it's, it's already, anyway, that, that part doesn't count. So, I guess, why do I pre-mix my gas? So, with the 582, I ran Amsoil Sabre. No, 582. The 503, I ran AMS oil Sabre. I pre mixed and I really like that stuff. It has oil uh, or gas stabilizer. Sta stable, stabilizer? Sta yes, sir. Sta stable. <laughs> stabilizer. Pretty sure it's stabilizer. It has fuel stabilizer in it. So um, the gas stabilizes and it lets it. It lets you sit for longer periods of time without having to worry about putting fresh gas in the tanks. So I like that aspect of it. And not only that, the reason why I pre-mixed it for this engine is um, if, if my oil injection system were to fail, I, I would still have some oil in the gas. So I, but here's the thing, why, why am I double oiling it? So I'm already doing it. I'm not saving any time by, by having the injection system on. And it's a pain in the butt because I got to clean it up all the time. So I'm like, heck with it, we're taking it off. That was long and rambly, but I don't care. There we are. So we're taking it off and um, I'm going to put the camera down and help and uh, I'll show you what it looks like when we get to another interesting step. So basically we just unbolt a bunch of bolts and what's this thing called Dave? What are we pointing at? Yeah. That is part of the induction. Okay. M intake manifold if you will. Okay. So that comes off and then the gear comes off the back. So this is always going to be there. That's going to always be there spinning but it's going to spin on nothing. That also runs your water pump on the other side. The water pump, is that, is that an important part? No, not if it's not running. <laughs> Alrighty, so yeah, we'll take that off, we'll take this off, and then we have to, these two hoses here, we have to connect those two ports together with the hose so we don't have like a vacuum leak there. We don't have, we're not pulling in extra air because that would make the mixture lean. So anyway, I'm going to give Dave a hand and I'll be back in a minute. So you, you said so, 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 so what? what? <laughs> so we have the tank off now. The tank is over there draining. And we have the oil pump off and we have the oil pump cable off, but we can't, we don't know how to take this apart to take that line out. So for now, until somebody comments below and tells me how to take this apart, um, we're just going to tie it up somewhere out of the way so it's not um, doing anything bad. So we're just going to tighten up some bolts here then we're going to kind of finish up here a little bit. Say hi Dave. Hi Dave. <laughs> doing my best work. So yeah you can see in there 
the ports where the injection oil went in needed to be tied off so we just took a piece of hose and tied them together so we won't get any vacuum from that and um, we just need to figure out how to either remove this last cable that's the one that controls the oil pump either remove it or tie it off somewhere I'm okay with either and then we need to make a little plate to cover up that hole so we'll make a little plate put some silicone on it or something for a little gasket and and thread that on so that we don't get air sucked in that way so that's what we need to do to finish this up so anyway we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna carry on with what it is that we're doing and and I'll be back when more stuff has been done right Dave right. All right, so I'm sorry for the crappy audio and video because I forgot the good camera at home. But there's the plate that I made to cover the hole that the oil pump went into. So it's just a piece of, I don't know, aluminum. I know it's aluminum, I just don't know how thick it is. Thicker than an eighth, thinner than a quarter. And uh, just kind of matched it and drilled it and popped it in. We put some silicone. Do you have the bottle? I'll let that part out. So we put some of this stuff in between the plate and the case so that, or whatever that is, so that in between here and here so it doesn't air leak. And then just tighten the screws back up and that's it. The, uh, the oil injection pump is off. There's the new hose. That's where the oil went into the carbs. And now that uh, they just mate with each other there so we don't get any vacuum sucking, leaking thing. And then we stick the carbs back on, and those are the carbs there. And then uh, Bob's our uncle. We're all done. Um, the only thing we have left to do is figure out what to do with the end of this, because we can't figure out how to open this to take it out. So I'm just going to zip tie it up to something. So I'll show you that finished product when we're all done. So we're going to stick the carbs back on, tighten everything up, and call it a day. Is it a day? Uh, half day. Oh, half day. All right. And that's it, just like that. Carbs are back on, no oil pump, plates on, siliconed, the extra wire we just ran up the root tube there and made it disappear so if I ever figure out how to open this up I'll just take it apart but for now it's just up and out of the way doing nothing, nothing for it to interfere with up there and I've cleaned some of the oil off the back of the engine so hopefully I don't get it covered in oil anymore because my oil bottle won't leak because it's not here <laughs> so yeah that's it what do you think Dave no thinking no thinking just doing flying apparently we're measuring measuring to see if uh, the tape something. measure is long enough <laughs> looks like it is the door opening we might want to build a hangar someday yeah I'd love to build a hangar someday especially on your property with a little 800 foot air strip. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway um, I guess that's it for this. That's how you take the oil injection system off of a 582. Did I miss anything? No. Good. Dave said I didn't, so I didn't. So done. if you have any questions, ask Dave, because he said I didn't miss anything. So that's that. Mm -hmm. Say goodbye, Dave. Bye, Dave.